You are listening to KLLG LP 97.9 Willits Hometown Radio. Tonight, the Willits Community Theater players will be premiering one of the five winning scripts from the Operation Ibsen Writing Contest. Tonight's play, She's Having a Party, was written by George Freak and directed by Jeff Ship. And now, She's Having a Party. We now go to the upper middle class home of Ruth and Charles, where modern discordant music is playing. Ruth is holding the telephone in her hand, looking perplexed and annoyed, when her husband Charles enters the room. I can't understand it, Charles. I don't want to try. What do you mean? What's that terrible racket, Ruth? Charles, you are such a Philistine. That is the new recording of Ludovico Chubosco's birthday sonata. It sounds like the garbage men collecting scrap iron. I hope you've remembered I'm having a surprise birthday party for Bertha Humboldt tonight. I hope you have a good time. What does that mean? You know tonight's my bowling night. I told you I was having this party a week ago. That's when I thought you were having it a week ago. Charles, I will not allow you to let me down. I even reserved theater tickets. Theater tickets? I reserved seats for Waiting for Godot. Oh my God, that's the most boring play ever written. Don't be silly. You're not familiar with every play that's ever been written. We saw that play 15 years ago. Why they're still performing it is beyond me. I wanted to sleep through the entire thing. Why didn't you? Your snoring kept me awake. I'm having enough trouble today, so I don't need any smart remarks from you. What I need is to go bowling tonight, if only to escape from that awful so-called music. Don't make me breakfast. I'll get it at Lucy's Diner. The entertainment there is far superior to waiting for Godot. Excuse me, Thelma. Excuse me, I'm sure. Where are the garbage men collecting all that scrap iron from? Good morning, Thelma. I wasn't going to come today, Ruthie. (laughs) But I knew with that party on, you needed me. So here I... Here I... (laughs) Here I am. I appreciate your loyalty, Thelma. Where do you want me to start, Ruthie? Let me think. I'm at sixes and sevens. I ordered some flowers from Gilcrest last week, and I want to confirm, but I can't reach them on the phone. Well, didn't you hear? Gilcrest is temporarily out of business. What? Harold was hit by a truck. I-, I guess he was in a mighty big hurry. You see, he was rushing to get out of town. It seems he was running off to Mexico with his secretary, Tina Warbuckle. So maybe he didn't look very carefully when he was crossing the street, because this big truck came out of nowhere and pow, right in the kisser. But they do think he'll live. Good heavens. Did they catch the driver of that truck? Yeah, she gave herself up. It was Molly Gilchrist. (gasps) Harold's wife? I guess those plans weren't so secret after all. Good grief. What am I going to do now? Have you thought about calling another florist? I don't know what's wrong with me today. I tell you, Thelma, I'm getting too old to do this. A surprise birthday party for a 60-year-old woman. Sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? Well, doesn't it? (laughs) Bless you. Thank you. Now, uh, where do you want me to start? Start with the bathroom, Thelma. That way you'll be there if you need it. Don't forget to call that florist. Florists. Florists. Here we are. Uh, Hello. Is this Bowman the florist? Hang up that phone. How did you get in here? I was following the lady who just came in. Why would you do that? I believe she's one of my patients. One of your patients? Are you a doctor? Yes, I am. Well, in a way. What does that mean? I heal people. Who are you? I'm Freddy, dear lady. Ready, Freddy Morgan. And I have something wonderful for you. You stop right there. I'm calling the police. Wait a minute. Just hear me out. I promise. It'll be to your advantage, and it will only take a minute. I don't have a minute. You don't know how right you are about that. 
Now, not, not if you continue the way you're going. What does that mean? Have you taken a look at yourself recently? I mean, a good look? What's wrong with me? Nothing. Thank you. Nothing that some miraculous herbal supplements and vitamins can't correct. You want that far gone. For instance, look at your color. What's wrong with my color? Nothing, if you like the color puce. And my goodness, you could pack your entire wardrobe in those suitcases under your eyes. Here, let me see your teeth. What? Hey, I'm not a horse. I'm only trying to help. Let me ask, have you been feeling tired lately? Do you find you're forgetting things you should remember? Do you find yourself occasionally getting angry for no reason? Whoa. I knew it. But do you know how I knew? I take Braino. This little pill not only increases your ability to reason out abstract problems, it also boosts your memory and increases your perceptivity level 100%. Believe me, this is your lucky day. Oh, your Braino is way off on that one. Uh, this is... Just one of the amazing products I'm offering you at a 50% discount. Yes, ma'am. Now, I'm not going to list for you every one of these superb vitamins and herbals. I'm simply going to offer you our one-of-a-kind, one-day special pick-a-pack. That's right. You're going to be getting 10, count them, 10 incredible health-enhancing supplements for the price of... Four. Oh, now hold it. Oh, did I say four? I meant three. But first... You will receive Braino, then our liver nostrum, and if that doesn't put the color back in your cheeks and bounce you back on top... Oh, do you rumba, by the way? Uh, I don't... Oh, you will. Trust me. And then uh, next... Stop! The, next, you'll be getting our multivitamin joy juice, and... I don't want it. No, uh, well, we can substitute the... No! I don't want your liver enhancer or your joy juice. I've had enough of you. Now, if you don't leave here in the next minute... I'm going to call the police and have you thrown in jail. You can't mean that. You just took up ten seconds of your time. But it, you're putting me out of work. Well, I'm sorry, but I'm trying to arrange a party for tonight, and I just don't have time for this. Look, I, I'm almost 60 years old. I, I, you'll be putting me out on the streets. Uh, you wouldn't want to do that to me, would you? But I don't have any time. Look... I'll give you a special deal. I just can't lose this job, please. Oh, for heaven's sakes. How much is that joy juice pack? It's a bargain at $29.99. All right, will you take a check? Believe me, you won't regret it. And then you go. Hand me that check and I'm out the door. Now out. Shipping and handling? Oh, give it back. Oh, I was going to say shipping and handling is free for orders over $25. Goodbye. You have made the best bargain of your life. In two weeks, you'll be feeling 20 years younger. I'll feel that way in two seconds when you're gone. Oh, by the way, I love your sense of humor. Mm. I really need a drink. Bertha will never appreciate what it took to give her this party. I wish there was some way I could tell her. Now, what was I doing? Oh, yes, calling Bowman's to order flowers. Hello? Hello? Is this Bowman's Flower Shop? This is a stick-up! Darlene! <laughs> Did I scare you? No, but you broke my eardrums. That works. As long as you're happy. That's right, Ruthie, because I'm here to make you gorgeous. Now just relax and get me something to put this solution in. I'm really happy to see you. Let me tell you, I have been having a trying day. All right. You go ahead and tell me, but first just soak your hand in this. Well, first off... But I, I must admit, I've had a perfectly marvelous day. Yeah, I'm happy for you, but my husband is being very inconsiderate about this party. That's not right, no. but that's a man for you. But wait until you meet Bob. He's my date. He is the exception that proves the rule. And the next thing that drove me crazy was... Uh... Isn't that how the old saying goes? What old saying? It is the exception that proves the rule, or the rule that proves the exception. But I guess that doesn't make much sense, does it? Oh, what's the difference? You'll just adore Bob. He is so sweet and considerate and good-looking. But hands off. Remember, he belongs to me. Oh, come now. Remember, I'm married. Just be sure you remember it. If Charles is giving you a headache. Don't be offensive, darling. Good golly, lighten up, Ruth. You know I'm only kidding. 
But I hope it doesn't sound too nasty if I say I can't wait for Blanche Carter to set eyes on Bob. That'll make the old cat retract her claws. But come to think of it, what does a cat do when she's crazy with jealousy? That's an awfully interesting question, isn't it? I wonder if real cats actually do get jealous. I'll have to ask my veterinarian about that. What do you think? I haven't had time to consider it. As I said, I've had other things to worry about today. For instance, about the flowers. That reminds me. Did I mention the flowers Bob sent me the other day? I haven't seen such a gorgeous bouquet since my third husband died. There were so many flowers in that bouquet, I didn't even recognize them all. You mean when Bernie died? Bernie who? Bernie was your third husband, wasn't he? I think you're right. Terrible of me to forget that, wasn't it? But I was talking about this bouquet Bob Wilcox sent me. Well, I haven't been able to get any flowers because Harold Gilchrist was hit by a truck. I almost got hit by a truck once. Those truck drivers should really watch where they drive. This truck was driven by Harold's wife. Now, what is her name? Marilyn? (sighs) It's Molly. Oh, yes. We were in school together. Did you know that? I was there, too. You always were smarter than me. Why do you think I was so dumb? Oh, you're dumb like a fox, Darlene. Well, speaking of driving... Who was speaking of driving? You were. You should see how Bob handles the new Cadillac of his. He looks so suave, driving it down the street. I swear he looks just like a movie star. (gasps) Which one? Walter Brennan? Huh? Oh, I get it. You're being funny. No, he looks more like Cary Grant. Well, Cary Grant and Walter Brennan have one thing in common. They're both dead. Oh, Ruth, sometimes you say the most hilarious things. (sighs) Are my nails ready yet, Darlene? Probably, but let's just give them another minute or two, okay? Why don't you tell me more about your awful day? I certainly appreciate you listening to my problems, Darlene. You are a real godsend. You'd be surprised how many people say that to me. And in just that tone, too. Now. Oh, for heaven's sake, I'm sorry. You know that darn stain is pretty nearly impossible to get out of a rug? Do you happen to have any turpentine handy? Turpentine? Oh, I'm sure we have gallons of it. That's amazing. Most people don't have it readily available these days. Hello? Oh, hello, Blanche. Blanche Carter. Of course not, Blanche. The more the merrier. (laughs) Who's the lucky gentleman? If he's coming with her, he's no gentleman. I've heard those escort services. I'm sorry, Blanche. Would you repeat that? I wonder how much money he had to pay. I'm sure there won't be any problem. There won't be if she doesn't get drunk. No, of course you wouldn't, Blanche. How much you want to bet she wouldn't? Yes. I know. We're all mature adults. For heaven's sake, Ruth, you don't have to baby her. I need to finish this beauty treatment so I can make myself beautiful for Bob. Well, I'll see you later. Just because Blanche can't get a man, why does everybody think they have to treat her with kid gloves? Simply being decent to someone, Darlene, is not necessarily treating them with kid gloves. Okay, I'm in too good a mood to argue. I hope you stay that way. I can't wait to see this sad sack Blanche is bringing... What's his name? His name is Bob. That's ironic. Bob Wilcox. There are two of them? Well, that's one possible explanation. But it's not a very likely one, is it? No. My God, this is incredible. There was probably some mistake, Darlene. You're so right. But who do you think made it? Well, how well do you know this Bob Wilcox? I know Blanche pretty well. Just don't blow this out of proportion. How can I do that? What I mean is, don't create a scene at the party tonight. Me? Create a scene? That is unfair, Ruthie. So you'll behave. Of course. But I'm afraid that somebody else has already caused a scene, and I don't like to be made a fool of. Darlene, are you sure you had an understanding with this Bob? Do I lie? Don't fly off the handle. But let me ask you something. How many husbands have you had? Let me think. I've had four... You've had five. I was going to say I don't count the last one. That skunk was just about the biggest... Oh, 
Be that as it may, Darlene, I only think sometimes when you meet a new fellow, you go a bit overboard, shall we say... Are you suggesting I throw myself at men? I'm not suggesting it. I'm stating it outright. Why, Ruth Byers! And I'm also saying that normally you'd be the first person to admit it. I might and I might not. But that doesn't change things. And when I see that primping, affected little queen... I don't think little describes Blanche. I'm talking about Mr. Wilcox. I'm talking about when you see him, you are going to behave. You're right. I am. Good. But how am I going to behave? Now, listen to me, Darlene Briggs, or Roosevelt, or Gorman, or Walthrop whatever you're calling yourself at the moment, you are not going to cause a scene at this party. I've been going through hell today. First, my husband threatens to go bowling. Second, I have not yet gotten in touch with a florist. Oh, God, the florist. And third, you're threatening to ruin my party by creating a scene over this Bob Wilcox. I wish I never said I'd have this party, but since I'm having it, Everyone is going to have a marvelous time. I can't take much more. And I keep asking the question, what's next? I got the bathroom finished, Ruthie. (sighs) I guess that answers your question. Thelma! Is she breathing? She said she had a cold. What should we do? Well, we'd better call 911. I got my mobile right here. What's the number? Oh, of course. I don't know if she actually is breathing. Hello? We have a lady here who's fainted. What is your address, Ruthie? I always forget. 2141 Seven Oaks Road. Well, we don't know what's wrong with her. That's why we called you. Not too bright. We're not doing anything at all. By the way, do you know artificial respiration? I think so. Stop! She says don't give it unless you're sure she's not breathing. Well, just tell them to hurry up. Hurry up! Ruthie, I'm sorry if I caused you a problem, okay? Thank you. She said they're on their way. It won't be long. I don't know what to do. I feel rather helpless. I guess she's breathing. Uh, Maybe I should slap her? Why? Are you mad at her? Uh, You're right. Probably not a good idea. How about if I just give her a little shake? No. Uh, I think I'll just wait for the medical people. That's a good idea. Sometimes when you try to help someone, you make it worse. You're right. And then they can sue the heck out of you. She was fine an hour ago. Just a little cold, she said. I think I hear a siren. Oh, thank heavens. Isn't life funny, Ruth? I mean, here we are in the prime of life. Well, not exactly the prime. But we still feel like we are, and then suddenly, bang. Food for worms. Oh, go see if they're here yet, will you, Darlene? I'm trying to make you feel better, Ruth. I mean, it's not your fault. Thank heavens. Hello, ma'am. What's your emergency? She's right there. Can you tell me exactly what happened? She was cleaning for me. She came in here to tell me she was finished with one room. Then she started to swoon and just collapsed. Hmm... Do you know if she has any medical conditions? None that I know of. Was she complaining of any problems when she arrived? She said she had a cold. Was she taking anything for this cold? Uh, She was drinking some kind of cold medication. Is is this it? Uh, That looks like it, yes. Do you realize this is incredibly potent stuff? Oh, my goodness. Did she overdose? She's not dead, is she? I'm afraid she is, ma'am, dead. Drunk. What? Why, Selma? It's hard to find good help these days. This stuff is about 100 proof. You're kidding. But what can I do? Don't let her drive. I don't want to sound insensitive, but I am having a party later this afternoon. Oh, I'm sure she'll come around. Well, at least she'll be all right. But are you sure? Yes. Yes. But she'll probably be worse before she's better. You know, hangover. A hangover? Really, Thelma? Roger? Darlene? 
But but when do you think she'll... How the heck are you, Darlene? Wow, you look great. I'm sure you don't mean that. You look pretty good yourself. This job keeps me in shape. I see that. I sure hope your wife appreciates what a lucky woman she is. No, I don't think she does. Oh, my. She divorced me last year. Oh, Roger. I'm so sorry to hear that. What was her name? Jezebel? Hmm. It was Isabel. Uh, you two seem to know each other? Yes, ma'am. We sure do. But that's a long, boring story. I didn't think it was so boring. And <laughs> Now, Roger. Oh, wake up, Thelma. You're simply drunk. Well... I guess you don't need me any longer. You don't think so? I guess maybe I should write up a report. I feel guilty about having called you at all. I don't mind. I always say, better safe than sorry. Is that what you always say, Darlene? Look here, Darlene. Would you mind if I gave you a call sometime? I'd like that. Okay, great. But why wait for some time? I mean... Here we are right now, and I've been invited to this party tonight. I sort of had a date, but it was nothing definite. So why don't you come with me? If you mean that, Dar, I'm all for it. There's always room for one more. Why don't I walk you to your ambulance? Very few of my calls turn out like this. I hope you're not just saying that. <laughs> Oh, uh, Bob Wilcox out. Roger, emergency technician in. Darlene, Darlene, Darlene. <sighs> now, where was I? Oh, gracious, the florist. What was that number? I should have it memorized by now. Hello? Is this Bowman's florist shop? <gasps> Oh, my. Oh, I, I had the most terrible dream. I hope it wasn't the DTs. Oh, it was awful. I dreamed somebody was shaking the living daylights out of me. <sighs> How do you feel now? I'm right as rain. Just that dream shook me up a little. Okay, uh, where do you want me now? I want you home. Home? But I got more cleaning to do. You finished the cleaning. I don't remember a thing. You're all finished. <laughs> Let me give you a check. Oh, that's okay, Ruthie. What with this party of yours, I'm not charging you anything. Well, that's really generous of you, Thelma, considering everything you did. Oh, if you say so, honey. I must have whizzed right through it. Well, now you have a swell time at that party tonight, you hear? Well, thank you, Thelma. I'm going to try. By the way, how did you come today? Oh, it's a beautiful day. I walked. I'll see you next week, Ruthie. Oops. Excuse me, Thelma. Yeah. Excuse me, I'm sure. She's done rather early, isn't she? Don't worry about that, Charles. Now, listen to me. I have had a terrible day so far, and it's barely afternoon. First, you tell me... But, but Ruth... Just be quiet and listen to me, Charles. After you left, I discovered the florist was hit by a truck. That was unfortunate. And then I had to buy a boatload of Braino. And next, Darlene tells me all about this wonderful date she has with someone called Will Bobcox, or Bob Wilcox, or whatever has a date with Blanche Carter, and then Thelma passes out from drinking cold medication, and Darlene makes a date with the emergency tech we called to look at Thelma. And I still can't get contact with the florist. So, Charles, I'm telling you that you are not going bowling tonight. You are going to be at my party, and furthermore, you are going to like it. Is that perfectly clear? All right, Ruth, I'll be at your party, but I can't promise I'll enjoy it. You wouldn't like to bet on that, would you? And now, I have got to call that florist. Maybe that's the florist calling you? Hello? What? But when? No. Yes, I certainly will. And have fun. Was it Bauman's? That was Bertha. Martin is taking her to Bermuda for her birthday. They're leaving in three hours. She wants me to watch her dog. There isn't going to be any party. Oh, gosh. After all your work. I'm sorry, honey. Yeah, 
You might be sorry and you might not be, Charles. But do you know what I am? I'm ecstatic. It's over. It's done. I'm through with it. But Charles, you are still not going bowling tonight. I'm not? What am I going to do? You're going to take me out to rumba. Woohoo! <laughs> Who needs bowling when you can have that? She's Having a Party by George Freak was directed by Jeff Ship and features Cindy Moore, R.S. Vellis, Kathy Vellis, Elizabeth Dellett, Kevin H. C. Moore, and Jeff Ship. Recording, editing, engineering, and other audio magic was performed by Kevin Moore. As always, the Willits Community Theater would like to thank its underwriters, NC Financial Group, and Vocality, and also special thanks to the Community Foundation of Mendocino County. To learn more about future events at the Willits Community Theater, or if you are interested in joining our merry group of radio thespians, or even on-stage thespians, please visit wctperformingartscenter.org. And thank you for listening to KLLG 97.9 Willits Hometown Radio. Good night.